Hey there everyone, Hadesh here and welcome to the Flutter series again. In this video, I will walk you through that how you can set up Flutter on a Windows environment. Now here's a one key element that you should always and always should understand. In the very first video, I told you that Flutter can be just one single code base for producing iOS and Android app and surely it is absolutely true. But on Windows, you can cannot set up environment for iOS. And it's not like you cannot make in the app in them. You will be making apps for iOS as well. It can be exported for them as well. But still, there is a limitation that you cannot set up an environment on Windows for Mac OS. Surely, you can take, uh, uh, like, you can write the code and everything what we are going to set up for that. And you can export that code for iOS. And for just like few minutes or few hours, you can borrow a laptop or a Mac uh, from your friend or parents and can just upload there. But still, it doesn't really prove our point uh, that we can set up all the things in here. So again, I repeat, you can only set up Android environment on Windows, not the iOS, but still your exactly same code can be used for iOS as well. Now that is clear up and uh, we are going to keep the discussion of Hackintosh and all these things out of the box completely here, uh, probably for a Saturday live on YouTube. Uh, but let's go ahead and move forward that what are the things that we require and how we can set up with them. I will walk you through each and every procedure that you should keep in mind. And I will also walk you through with some of the tools that you should have if you want to follow along with me in this entire series. So what the plan is, here are the Windows guys, here are the Mac guys. I want you to bring them at the same point and from there we can both continue and forward and move further. So let's go ahead. Now, first thing that I would recommend you is get the Git bash. Yes, your command prompt on Windows is amazing. It's awesome. I'm nothing against about it. But it would be better if you just start working on Git bash. It's something that you can download and just click, click next. Yes, I agree, agree install. It's something like that and gives you something like this, Git bash. It is almost like a command prompt in terminal. So whenever you see me uh, typing anything on a Mac, it is better that you type all those things instead of that terminal, use this Git bash. And whatever the commands that I'll be using, it's gonna be exactly same for you here. For example, ls command is used on Linux and Mac, but on Windows, it's a little bit different known as dir. So it would be better that if you install a Git bash. So that's one thing, just go ahead, download the Git and install it. It's fairly simple installation. Now the second thing is Java. Yes, we won't be writing any single code in Java. Instead, we don't need even any, any editor for that. But there are some chances that some of the user who might be watching uh, might be on a system which is a little bit outdated and they might be using a little bit outdated Android Studio as well. For that, I recommend you to just go ahead, look on the Google JDK download and you will be redirected to this page. Just click on this one. Uh, accept the license and terms and agreement and just go for the Windows, which is this one. Download it. Click, click next. Yes, I agree. Okay, install. So that's like the easiest install of that. Once you have installed it, there is one single procedure that you have to follow. And what is that procedure? Now, first, let's understand this procedure. It's very important for your future as well. Now, let's just assume we have a big store. And in that store, there is a single mic system from which you can just call anybody. But in order to call anybody in your big store, you should be aware that who is working in your store. Maybe there's a new hiring, somebody is newly hired and you don't know his name. So you cannot just call him or make an announcement on speaker and just call him anywhere. Similar to that, in our computer, there is a single point of calling system from which you can call anybody from this computer, from any terminal, wherever you are. You might be on desktop, you might be on document, wherever you are. And for that, you have to know the name of that person. So we are gonna register that person in our entire uh, calling system. So how we can do that, just open up your uh, C drive. Let me open this up, uh, this PC, and we are gonna open up C drive. And in my program files, I can see there is a folder named as Java. In that, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go for JDK and there's a bin folder. So this is the place where I want to be. Okay, and in this you can find out uh, things like uh, Java C and Java and all of that. So this is the place I want to be. Now click on this address bar and it's gonna convert into this. So just copy this, right click and copy. Now we need to make an entry in our speaker system so that we can call Java from anywhere, okay? Just click on this terminal and write some words of you want to edit environment variables. So I'm gonna just type out environment and it's gonna pop up edit environment variable system. Click on that and click on this environment variable system. And there we go, this is the system that you'll be getting. Just click on, uh, select this path and click on edit. Now all you want to do is simply click on this new and just paste this entire thing here and that's it, you are done. 
that's it's so easy. Now, mine is already set up actually. Uh, I'm already having a JDK bin and all these folders, so I don't want to add another one. So I'm gonna just delete it as of now, but what you have to do, click on okay and okay, and that's it, it's all set up. There is not even a requirement of uh, restarting the system. Okay, so now this is all cleared up. We all have installed uh, JDK on our system as well. Now you can follow along along with me. Next up is the Android Studio. Now we don't need actually Android Studio. We can totally work on our own real devices as well. I'll walk you through with that as well. But right now, let's just install Android Studio. Now just download it. It's a big file. Just click, click next. I agree. Yes, okay. That's the simple procedure of installing it. Now be cautious at one place. You should always be connected on a decent size and decent speed of internet as well because even after installing everything, there are some updates and checks and things uh, which we even not are aware of. It takes it from the internet. So you need to have a like decent speed. It's gonna download like around 300 to 400 MBs of data from the internet. If you are not gonna be providing that, uh, it may give you some errors as well. Now one big, big thing, just mark it as bold, underline, sidebar, whatever you call that. Whenever you see any kind of thing that says Gradle update and Gradle sync error, there is always a button. Uh, it doesn't look like a button actually, it just says try again. That's the only solution because sometimes uh, we live in different countries and at the, and those countries the internet is might not be stable. And don't judge the internet by, I'm, I'm able to watch the YouTube videos uh, just like smooth. It might be getting breaks sometimes. So you, in YouTube, it's not that much visible, but on other platforms, it's visible. So just hit the try again, and that's it. You should be fine, okay? And there's no need to set up or doing anything for that, so it's all good. Now let me just open up my Android Studio. So there we go, hit enter. And my Android Studio is gonna take a little bit while because it might be a little bit on a slower side. Okay, there we go, Android Studio. Okay, and in the meantime, it just gets up and running. We can talk about rest of the tools that we do require. Now, the next tool that we require is VS Code. Yes, I have asked you to install Android Studio, but all the code that I'll be writing in this entire series are on Visual Studio Code. We will be installing some of the plugins into that that I'll walk you through later on, and we just need this editor here. So go ahead, install that as well. Just download it. So there we go, we are, uh, it's still loading some of the components and modules. So go ahead and in case you have any other preference of any other editor, feel free to go it. In this entire series, I will be using this one. So if you want to follow along with me, all the uh, neat tricks and trips that I'll be walking you through, I recommend to use the Visual Studio code. Okay, there we go. And uh, I don't need any tips at all. I'm gonna just close you down. Okay, so this looks like I'm already having a small project here. What you have to do is once you have this, just go on to this file, new and just new project here, okay? Uh, in fact, I'm gonna walk you through now how you can create a simple project. It's not very uh, like uh, much awesome or something. We're gonna call this as tester and we are gonna store, it's right now storing it on here, but I want to store that on my desktop. So, okay, where is my desktop? Can I find it? Okay, it looks like, okay. So it's a little bit hard for finding desktop users. Okay, I should be able to find it here. There we go, our desktop. I'm gonna click OK. This is where I want to uh, put it. And uh, desktop already exists at the specified. No, my, its name is not desktop, come on. Its name is tester, come on. And we don't need any C++ support or Kotlin support for that. We can just go ahead directly with that. Click on Next and click on Next. And we just need an empty activity, Next, and uh, Finish. Now the reason why I'm walking you through with this as well, because although we won't be creating projects from Android Studio, but there is one thing that you should be aware about the Flutter. Whenever you're going to run the Flutter apps, they need any device which is up and running. And it can be a real device if you plug it in, that's all fine. But sometimes you don't have a device or you don't want to use it. In that particular case, you need a simulator which should be up and running, okay? So how that can be done, I need to close this older one. There we go. Okay, so what you can do is, as soon as you'll be start uh, running this project, it's gonna prompt you that, hey, you can create the Android Virtual Devices, which is also known as AVD. I'm gonna click on Run here, and this is you're gonna be getting. Now, if you have any connected device, it's gonna detect you. Make sure you have uh, check mark your developer options in your phone as well, which is super easy, just tap it so many times. And since uh, yours might not be getting any one of them, what you can do is go ahead, create new virtual device, select your favorite phone, it can be Pixel as well, and we are gonna just click on Next. 
In the next, your system will not be having any images of operating system that Android use, neither the 28, neither 8.1, 8.0, whatever that is. What you have to do, just like mine is saying download, you have to download it. Yes, of course, it's gonna ask you for, I agree, next, okay, and all those stuff. Once you click on that, it's gonna show up just like me, exactly, without the download button, and just click on the next, and then finish, your device will be ready. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing, right now I'm gonna hit cancel, you just need to click the finish, and I'm gonna be just running this one on OK. Now, since I have run this demo project just here, this is like the easiest way. Surely you can run the Android virtual devices directly as well. I will walk you through as well. Uh, that's easy peasy process. So now, one of my phone is up and running. Notice, very important, one of my phone is up and running. I don't need anything else. It should be just up and running. I'm gonna minimize it. Okay, now the next thing is, uh, I'm gonna minimize this one as well. So the next thing is Visual Studio Code. Make sure you go ahead, grab it, the settings of Visual Studio Code and everything, I will walk you through in a separate video. Now comes up the meat part, which is Flutter. And trust me, uh, at first I didn't like the way how it gets installed, but it's actually way better and super easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead into Docs section, and uh, inside that we are going to go on to this Install button. I want to install it on Windows. And trust me, it's super easy. What you have to do is, first and foremost, just ignore all of this. You don't want to even read that because we have already covered that part. Next thing is, you want to download the Flutter. So there we go, just click on this and it's gonna download Flutter on your computer. Mine is already here, you can see that as well. This is the Flutter, this is the exact file you're gonna get. And place it somewhere safe, probably in your documents, probably on desktop, wherever you like. I prefer the desktop. So there we go, once you have had that, we're gonna repeat the exact same process that we followed up in Java. Remember, a new person is hired in our system and we want our announcer to know about it so that we can call him from anywhere. And exactly same thing we're gonna do. So just go ahead, remember the commands. If you want to follow, just pause the video here, go ahead and do it before me. It would be really fun. So once you have opened up the Flutter, wherever you have kept it, just click on this address bar. It's gonna give you the full address. So we're gonna right click and copy. What was the next step? Yes, exactly. We need to go into this guy and say, I want to edit the environment variables. So we're gonna click on that. You know the next step? Yes, it is. Environment variables. And what we want to do is select this path. Yes, this is the variable we want to edit. In case the variable is not there, just make one. It's so simple, just call it path. Just like this here, click on new and call it path. And we're gonna call edit now. And you want to click on this new and then just copy and paste that and that's it okay and uh, what you need to do is after that just put a slash uh, that's gonna be this one and then you have to say bin this is the additional thing that you have to do because we did the same thing for java as well but we went actually inside the bin folder we we didn't need to do that but again make sure it says uh, slash bin at the end this is compulsory now, this is all you have to do. Now, click on OK. Now, since mine is already there, there is no point of having two system for calling the same thing. So I'm gonna just delete mine. But you understood the concept. That's the most important part. And we're gonna click OK, and then click OK. And then again, one more time, OK. Now your system is aware of the flutter is in your system, and that is a good news for us. And trust me or not, that's it. That's the whole installation of the flutter. Download it, set the path, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Now, in case you are onto a little bit older system, probably like Windows 7, I don't know why you are still on Windows 7, just upgrade the latest one. Uh, what you have to do is exactly same thing, but in that you don't have this new creating option, just click on the path and just add this address and make sure you use a semicolon for that, but that's also easy one. Okay, now what we need to do is, uh, we need to go ahead and use this flutter doctor command to do all these things, okay? So again, I would recommend to use the Git Bash. So we're gonna open this Git Bash and make sure your Android device is actually up and running. We don't need even the hello world, but we just need it there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this as simply flutter, flutter doctor. There we go, just run this command, hit enter. It may take a little bit while on your system to detect all these things in detail, uh, but there is usually one instruction that says, uh, hey, everything is super fine, but you haven't accepted some of the license. And to accept the license, the command will also be mentioned here. So just copy that command or just type it again and just press Y, Y, Y. It's gonna say, hey, I'm agreeing with all the license. We usually do. So there we go. 
Okay, now let's read this a couple of times here. Now notice it says VS Code is installed on our system. That's a good news because we are going to be using that. It says connected device one available. That is why we are having this up and running. If this is not up and running, I will show you that as well. It's going to say, hey, there is no connected device right now. Feel free to just plug in a real device and it's going to work fine as well in that case. And rest of the things, all check marks are right. That means everything is good. And it says Android toolchain, develop Android devices. Everything is so amazing in this. So it says all is good, all is amazing. We will be creating and doing our projects from here as well. But in case it shows any error, uh, feel free to just post it in the discussion section. I would be happy to check that out and resolve that issue as well. And we have also done this Android installation as well. I know this is this is like a little bit later in here, uh, but you don't need to read it. If you have followed the video and you have paused it on exact time and down downloaded, have write the tools and have downloaded the right tools, and then it should be good all up and running. Okay, so this is not exactly was in uh, like a write to write guide, but it was like rather an instruction set that you have to follow. Now, just for the sake of fun, I'm going to just close this device. And now I'm going to run the flutter doctor command again so that we can see that uh, once we, why we did that, why we installed everything. So when I say flutter doctor, it's going to say, uh, hey, there is one issue. It says uh, no device is available for running your code. So we're going to run the code. And that's why we have actually installed. So whenever you need that, the easiest one is uh, just have kind of this kind of project in it and just open up a virtual device. But as an assignment, let me tell you, if you'll Google a little bit, you can find out how you can open Android virtual device directly through a single command. And let me know that what is the command in the comment section below. I will be waiting for that. So this is the whole video. I know it's a little bit longer, but this is the whole video about setting up Flutter as well as Android on a Windows device. In the next video, I will walk you through how you can do exactly same setup on a Mac device as well. So Mac guys, you have to just uh, do one, one or two more things, but Windows one is super easy and super fun to do. Okay. Uh, Again, just on the quick revision, uh, get the Git, get to Java, install that and set up the path, download the Android Studio, make sure you resolve all the greater letters just by hitting try again, try again. And then you get a VS Code. We haven't set it up, but we surely will. And then uh, just get the Flutter, set the path, and that's it. You're ready to go. Surely there might be one more error that you might get, which is, hey, your Visual Studio is not having a plugin of a Dart or Flutter. Don't worry about that. Just ignore that for a moment because we will be working on that in the next video. Okay, so this was your quick video of setting up almost everything that you need for Flutter and Dart. And uh, in the next video, let's catch up and try to do all these things on a Mac as well. I will surely catch you up in the next video, but make sure if you need more such videos, uh, hit, hit that like button, subscribe button, and share this video. It, it motivates me a little bit.